Welcome to our lecture online. Here's our next example of biomechanics. In this case, we're talking about the muscles in the back that allows us to bend over and potentially hold weights like this. Now, of course, that's not recommended, and we'll see in just a moment why that is not recommended. If you're going to lift up a heavy weight, you don't want to do it with your back in a position like this. So here you have a person. These are the person's legs. That's a person's back. That's a person's arms. As you can tell, I'm not very artistic, so that would be the best I, I could draw a person at. Here's the person's head. So the person's holding a weight like this, and now it's this back muscle right here, which attaches about two-thirds the distance from the pivot point to the attachment to the back right here, and that is what's holding the body up. Now, assuming that the weight of the body is about 300 newtons of the upper part of the body, acting at a distance of L over 2 right here, Hmm, I did not account for the, uh, for the weight of the head. Eh, let's say, how big is the head? Maybe another five pounds right here. That would be another 20, another 200 newtons. Hmm. 200 newtons would be the most. How about 100 newtons? Let's make the head 100 newtons right here. And that would be L plus a little bit more. So let's call that about uh, six-fifths of an L, six-fifths the length of the back, if this is the length of the back right here, that makes a lot of sense. All right, that will work. We're ready to go now. What is the strength that this muscle or the force that this muscle needs to apply to keep the whole body in equilibrium like that? Since it's in equilibrium, we know that the sum of all the torques, the sum of all the torques uh, must add up to zero, and the pivot point is right here. Let's call this point A. We'll go ahead and put that as point A. Now we need to add up all the torques that are acting on this. The weight of the torso, the, the weight being held up, and the weight of the head all together, those three cause a clockwise direction in the torque. That's a negative torque. We have zero equals a negative 300 newtons times a distance of L over 2 minus 500 newtons times a distance of L and minus 100 newtons times a distance of 6 over 5L. But now we have the muscle here pulling in the opposite direction, that's a positive torque, plus the force times, now we need, to dis we need the perpendicular distance from the line of action of force to the pivot point. That's this right here. So let's go ahead and complete this triangle right here. This is the perpendicular distance, let's call this D. And so force times D, that's the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force, which is right here, to the pivot point. Let me draw the triangle over here so we'll figure out what D is equal to in just a moment. So there's the triangle that we're dealing with. This angle here is 12 degrees. This distance here is D, and the hypotenuse here, the hypotenuse, is equal to two-thirds the length of the back which means that D is equal to the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle of 12 degrees because we can see here that D is directly opposite the angle that would be 2 thirds L times the sine of 12 degrees and that will be D right there when we plug that into the equation. Let's go ahead and do that now. We have 0 is equal to minus 300 newtons times L over 2, minus 500 newtons, times L, minus 100 newtons, times 6 over 5 L, plus F times D, and D is 2 thirds L times the sine of 12 degrees. Since this is all set equal to 0, and every term has an L in it, the L cancels out, so we can get rid of the L here, the L there, the L here, and the L there. Simplifying things a little bit, 0 is equal to minus 300 divided by 2, that's minus 150 newtons, minus 500 newtons, minus 100 divided by 5 times 6, that would be uh, minus 120 newtons, and finally over here we have plus 2 thirds F times the sine of 12 degrees. Combining these, that's 650, 750, 770 newtons, minus 770 newtons, plus 2 thirds F times the sine of 12 degrees. 
Finally, now we can solve this for f by moving this to the other side, turn the equation around. We have f is equal to 770 newtons. That would now be positive times the inverse of this times 3 over 2 and divide the whole thing by the sine of 12 degrees. With a calculator, 770 times 3 divided by 2 equals and divide by the sine of 12 equals and wow, 5,555 newtons, 5,555 newtons. Let's put that in pounds as well. For our friends there that like pounds better than newtons, we have a pound, a newton, uh, one pound is 4.448 newtons. And if we divide this by 4.448 equals uh, roughly, 1,250 pounds. Notice how much strength your back has to have to lift object up in this position like this. Even without a weight, even the weight of your back and the weight of your arms, the weight of your head, in this position right here puts an enormous amount of force or your back needs to apply an enormous amount of force just to hold it in that position, let alone even lifting a heavy weight. Again, that's why the advice is keep your back up straight so that the torque angle is much smaller and you can lift weights up in this position, much better for your back. This is how you're going to injure your back. Not recommended to do so. Imagine the force required to lift the weight up in that position. And that's how we do that.